Good morning, YouTube. This is Pervious1030, and it is definitely morning. It is 8:36. Um, and as far as the day, it's Wednesday, May 8th. I did a video the other day, and I said it was like the 9th or something, but <clears throat> it wasn't. I was wrong. It happens. So I'm out here in the greenhouse today, and I was sitting here thinking, you know, um, a lot of what I do here in the greenhouse is pretty much common sense uh, as far as plants go. Anybody can grow stuff, and I know a lot of people say, well, I have two black thumbs, and yeah, that's just a mindset. Uh, usually the cause for that is overwatering, not watering enough, or um, just um, not knowing what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Um, so it's really easy to grow plants, um, in my opinion, because I've been doing it for so long. But uh, a lot of people don't realize just, you know, with soil you can buy pre-made mixes now for whatever you need. And they've just made it so much more convenient. Or you can go to your local hydroponic store or even your local Home Depot and I'm sure they can give you resources on how to become a better gardener. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's that and I uh, wanted to give a shout out to my brother Groom. Yeah, I know you're probably watching this. He's, uh, he's fixing to move back in the woods. Um, he's an excellent dog trainer and uh, he's finally living his dream so kudos to you Grooms. Um, and me, I'm living mine. Where else would I rather be in my greenhouse? Um, I also am uh, leading a program at my children's school. Um, it's called the Garden of Hope. And I do an adult class and I do a child's class. And by no means, I am not, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I have no degree in botany or anything of that nature. This is just all from hands-on trial and error. I made a mistake and, uh, you know, learn from it. So, that's how I learned over the years. Um, so as I sit out in the greenhouse today, I'm looking around and everything's looking pretty decent. Got a couple flowers here. Um, and I want to show you guys something check this out now I uh, put some stuff in this little hydroponic system I made it's made out of a tote and check this out look at these roots these are just two inch net pots and I put my um, lettuce in there and it seems to be liking it however even in a greenhouse you do get weeds it's I don't know it's just the nature of the beast, I guess. And I do have weeds in my greenhouse, and I shouldn't, but I do. Um, but the roots on these hydroponic plants seem to be doing very well. Now, I am cloning. I don't mean to get so close on the camera. But as you can see, the little tomato plant right there, I am cloning this little guy. And we're going to make sure that uh, these all grow nice and healthy. <clears throat> and. Uh, see where we go with that. I do have a couple that I have cloned or around here somewhere. Up oh, right here. This is one of my cloned uh, plants, and you can actually still see some root right there. If you look real carefully, there's some roots. And it's raining again. We've been getting much needed rain here in Colorado, uh, which is actually quite awesome. But I am going to kick the heater on a little chilly. So, yes, uh, sorry about some of my other videos. I know they're really shaky. I've had some people tell me, you know, even my better half, you need to work on that. And, um, yeah, I think I think I do. I want to get a tripod and, uh, you know, make more videos and make them right. And, <laughs> you know, guys, I just make videos because I get bored easily. Um, and I... I do believe that this is the best way for me to share my little slice of paradise with the rest of the world. 
um, without actually having the rest of the world physically around me. Uh, yeah. So, in this greenhouse, I have a few uh, interesting things I wanted to show you guys. Ah, here we go. Uh, all right, check it out. This. Can you see this? Okay, this is my three sisters' garden. Now, what you have here is some squash, a bean, and some corn. And some of you might have no idea why I did this. And some of you go, oh yeah, I've seen that before. Well, here's the thing. Corn, like pumpkins or even this fella, sunflowers, they uptake a lot from the soil, <clears throat> nutrients and what have you. And corn is actually a member of the grass family. So it needs a lot of nitrogen and it'll, it'll pull it as it goes or what have you. Um, so the idea here is three sisters, to my understanding, this replenishes nitrogen in the soil. This is pretty much just for ground cover kind of keep the roots where they need to be. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. However, in fact, all of these do very well together. So, Three Sisters Garden, I'm going to be doing updates on it throughout the summer. We're going to see how it does because most people, whenever they think of growing corn, they think you need acres and acres and acres of land. That is just not true. Now they have uh, varieties that are four buckets. Um, it's pretty good stuff. So, I want to try that this summer. Uh, and uh, here I have some celery. And this celery is special celery because this is once eaten celery. We have already eaten this one time. And if you look down in there, right there, you'll see where the rim is, where we've already cut it up and eaten it once. But it likes it here. We're gonna this will come back a second time as long as the roots are doing what the roots need to be doing <clears throat> and I make all of my miniature planters out of water bottles it's pretty neat <sighs> voila I mean there's a ridge right here and this ridge right here kind of goes in and if you do it right and you cut it right they click in you ain't gotta worry about it coming out okay but that's a neat little trick <clears throat> And you know, that's my celery. And I got some other stuff growing. Oh, these are some of my wife's cup of flowers. And like I said, guys, you know, even in a greenhouse, yes, you get these little buggers. And I just pick them, I pick a day and I pull them all out. And the day I pull them all out is the same day everything gets weeded. And it is a task. And in one of my earlier videos, I had this little tiny nub. That little tiny nub is what you see before you today. This is elephant garlic. You've probably seen that store, giant cloves of garlic. I figured, eh, what the heck. I'll give it a go. Try to grow me some elephant garlic. And, uh, well, I've done it. Now, garlic's weird. Because you can leave garlic in the ground for a couple years and it'll just form as it would. Potatoes are the same way. Carrots, you can, you know, take the tops of the carrots and grow them. And I want to teach the kids that, uh, the fifth graders that I'm teaching, you know, exactly how plants regenerate themselves via cloning or just throwing a potato in the ground. You know, I think that's something that everybody should learn because honestly, guys, we have way too many hungry people in this country, and I know a lot of it's due to laziness. Got it. But I don't believe that people should go hungry. That's just asinine. Uh, you know, we have more than plenty uh, people doing gardenings, and honestly, you know, that's a lot of seeds. If you can collect your seeds and do a community garden, I say go for it because, you know, at the end of the day, you have a power to feed a family that might not have gotten a meal through your gardening. 
And, you know, people go, well, you know, harvest in the fall. And that ain't even true because you can get a few harvests of different things off of your garden. Um, in the spring, uh, lettuce. Um, I wouldn't do Brussels sprouts. Most Some people do, but it depends on your location. Here in Colorado, you can probably get away with it. It's pretty cold. Um, or in the fall. Because these, you know, lettuce, radish, um, any cold weather crop you can do in the spring. And of course, you're going to have your warm weathers like your tomatoes and what have you. And your beans. Um, and those are summer crops. Now, you can get another crop in by doing, you know, maybe some red beets in the fall. Maybe some, oh, I don't know, iceberg lettuce, cabbage, please excuse me. I just ate breakfast, so bear with me. Um, but some of these cold weather crops, you can get a couple crops out of. Just like corn. If you plant your first rotation of corn, and then a week later you throw more seeds in the ground, well, that's awesome, because guess what? You're gonna get a second harvest. And I guess that's what it's all about is optimizing um, what you can get out of your garden throughout the year. Um, yeah, so there's a there's quite a few things that you can grow twice, um, and that comes on to my uh, next topic, which is crop rotation. It is very important for crop rotation because you don't want to grow the same thing in the same spot twice. The reason being is because if I just had corn and I put it over here and it grew and it grew well, it done depleted everything in that soil so it's kind of pointless to have corn grow there again and ain't going to do that great or anything else for that matter that would take from that soil. So the next time I might plant peas or beans or anything that's going to replenish the nitrogen in that soil and you know replenish it but it is quite wise to grow the peas or the beans while the corn is growing so you're replenishing the nitrogen while you're pulling it so on and so forth um, so I've grown quite a few things out here um, and last year I didn't have too much luck with corn at all so I'm gonna try this three sisters garden see how that goes I got some potatoes going over here uh, my bucket of potatoes and like I said people you don't need a hundred acres. These are potatoes in a bucket. Container gardening is so easy if you live on a in a high rise and all you've got is a patio. Man, even if your patio is just, you know, two foot by three foot and all you've got is room to sit with a cup of coffee or whatever you enjoy. Um, that's really all you need is a little bit of space for some potters because the roots of plants, plants will grow to their environment. So if you got a little pot, you know, stick with little tomatoes if you can only afford little pots. But the great part about being a gardener is this. I, and I'm sure you've seen it on many other YouTube channels, I really don't need to go buy uh, expensive $10 pots. Oatmeal. Cardboard. It's going to deteriorate anyway, so I can at least get some good uh, usage. Because this has like a wax film on it, almost like a plastic. And it actually, you know, contains things pretty well. Right now I have my grape in here. And a little bit of crustaceans down in there eating on the grape. But, um, <clears throat> You know, this is a great planter right here. This container right here. Or a five gallon bucket, you can drill holes in the bottom of it, throw soil in there if you're growing something big like um, squash or cucumbers, something like that. So, there's some, even water bottles, there's some options for you for, you know, growing plants on a very tight budget, like zero. And here's an age old thing everybody's seen. How many of you have seen that trick, huh? Yeah, it's just a, well, buttermilk uh, container because I make banana bread so good banana bread too uh, and I utilize that and here's just a couple more examples country crock got a little squash in there it's loving it um, and as you've already seen my Folgers planters these things are great I mean you can find these off of your friends hey save them for me whatever 
I have no shame, so I've done I've I've done my fair share of uh, dumpster diving in my time. And hey, if I can utilize it and get it for free, I'm gonna do it. So <clears throat> yeah, there's just a few ways that you guys can uh, save some money and get into gardening at the same time. And uh, a lot of times, even for plants, okay, a lot of times you can go to Home Depot or somewhere like that and say, hey, are you guys throwing any plants away? And here's the cool thing, they're gonna tell you, yeah, because they're eventually going to throw some plants away, even Walmart, they can't save them all. So you can actually take those plants, nurse them back to health. And that's why they're dying. They're not diseased, they're just poorly taken care of. So you, if you can, bring that back and uh, revive it from <laughs> the, the neglect that it had for that time, then you can have pretty much a free garden. And uh, yeah, so, and another thing to do, look on some YouTube videos about cloning. Take one plant, make it into 10. I mean, it's just a no-brainer why wow, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty much the conversation for today. I just wanted to let you guys know some uh, great ways to save some money and things and uh, just be a frugal gardener, I reckon. So, with that being said, I bid you farewell and until next time, YouTube, take it easy, guys.